Welcome to episode two, tapping into the source of insight-driven clarity, intellect, and purpose. As you think about the trajectory of your career, during a time in your life when you thought you'd be past the need to do that, you have to suspend disbelief at what you might view as an imposition. So I suggest you and we look at this recalibration as an opportunity, an opportunity to take the reins of your own story. You've got the right stuff to do this. You have the insight that's been developed over decades of experience. You have the intellect to think about that experience objectively. And you have the know-how to work purposefully at shape-shifting yourself to meet the demands presented during this time in your life. As they say, celebrate the change. I think you'll enjoy the process. It will be revelatory. And you'll appreciate the results because this exercise is calibrated to reveal who you are rather than what you do. And that leaves a more lasting impression on those who make decisions about your fate in the workplace. This episode will show you where the breakthroughs come from. And later on in the series, we'll take a look at how to implement the insights that come from those breakthroughs. While you'll never be able, again, to rest on your laurels, you can stop people important in your work life from judging you with that, what have you done for me lately mentality. So let's get started. You'll need to do a bit of a diagnostic on critical skills and capabilities. It's an extensive deep dive into all of the components that round out your persona as a professional. You wouldn't let your car go without a tune-up for as long as you've been in your career. So taking a look at your skill sets as an experienced adult with lots of career moments under your belt will reveal a host of inconsistencies. And this is where the rubber meets the road. It's the place where you can get a glimpse, not how you'd reinvent yourself, but instead, how you take your considerable talents to a more refined, sophisticated level. So let's dig deeper into this. First, it's important to look at the choices you've made. Good, not so good. High points, forks in the road, workarounds, roads not traveled, cherished insights lost to time. Good, bad, or indifferent, it's critical. And most of the times it leads to some big reveals. It's a certainty that volatility in the workplace started long before COVID-19. We've accommodated every twist and turn through decades of challenges, sometimes losing pieces of ourselves as we adapted to a dozen new normals. And emotional intelligence. Remember when that became the buzzword in the 90s? We'll look at how your emotional IQ has assisted you, how it sometimes fooled you, and how you can feel confident that it's still there how it can help you feel safe as you search for the right trajectory. If you could extract out your unique talents from the rest of your attributes and concentrate on highlighting those best-in-class capabilities, you'd begin to get a preview of a more potent professional. Then you can decide overall what attributes would be opportunistic to keep or develop, which reflexive habits you'd be happy to be rid of because they no longer feel contemporary or comfortable you can actually begin to shapeshift your persona. In terms of your problem-solving skills, how would you rate yourself on how you've historically responded to the elephants in the room? Did you wrestle them to the ground? What process have you used to problem-solve? How did you push meaningful conversations forward towards solutions? Or choose the best alternative rather than the lesser of evils? Wrapped up inside of personal leadership skills is a complex grouping of talents that are interrelated. Are they consistent and reliable? Do they demonstrate your agility? Are they imbued with humble integrity? Do they show the courage of your strong convictions or an ability to communicate? Do they show dependability, integrity, mentoring? Ask yourself this, do others want to follow you? It's tough to say what the ultimate new normal will be. When I work with clients, we look first at what needs to be addressed immediately. Find a way to heal the current situation until we can get a handle on how to move forward. We look both forward and backward to solve issues with wisdom. We get clear on how today's decisions will impact future potential. You'll need to re-examine your decision-making process, the way in which you bring together logic, reason, and personal philosophy. Being attentive to your internal guidance system, what you might call your gut feeling or your gut instinct. Clear away illogical emotional subterfuge that's caused trouble in the past. 
Sometimes volatility in the workplace creates a situation where career decisions are made based on how we can dodge that volatility. It's important to take stock of your most accessible talents. Decide which of those talents count most in today's marketplace. Then understand what's missing, how you can amplify your skill set with education and training that will keep you relevant. Decide which risks are worth taking to get to your end goal. Be clear about whether the direction you are going in is still feasible based on how many years you have left to work and how you envision your retirement. Most of us are not enthusiastic about networking. Your current skill set for networking, therefore, might be rusty. You know, if you think about networking as an intellectual effort that can further you along your personal path, it can be freeing. And you can learn how to do pinpointed networking that's wisdom-based and beneficial. Lastly, let's talk about your career pivot points. You can't navigate an on-ramp to another career direction unless you recognize it is an on-ramp. And more particularly, recognize that it's a productive one, not just an on-ramp that will move you out of the situation you're in despite the compromises. You'll need to understand the difference between pivot points suggested for you by others and pivot points calculated by you toward a specific goal. If this all sounds daunting, it really isn't. It's a process that builds upon itself and you begin to see positive results fairly immediately, especially in the area of self-confidence. Michelangelo was once asked how it was possible to create such lifelike human forms out of slabs of stone. He responded by saying, I just chip away at the stone until the perfect form reveals itself. I believe that's the job we all have. It's certainly my job as a coach to help clients chip away at the accumulation of work fatigue, stress, and frustration from a long career in order to reveal their perfect form. You know, you already are what you've been looking for. You already have the intuition to guide you there. If ever there was a moment for a transformative breakthrough, this is it. I'll see you in episode three, emotional intelligence, problem solving capabilities, and personal leadership skills.